Hi everyone, Emma here. So, did you guess these lovelies? <laughs> I'm kind of surprised myself that I picked these. Although, I mean, everything that I have in my cart, I want to make a bracelet with. So, it's no wonder. But it, it was not the first thing that I thought of when I got my order. But um, I do love these drops. So, these are Miyuki Seafoam Green Matte Picasso Coated. That's a long title. 3.4 millimeter drops. And what we are going to do is we're going to make a leather bracelet. And we are going to use some of this gorgeous Eslon. Let me bring up a little more light. See if. Actually, let me see what that looks like. Yeah, that should do it. I um, kind of want to get rid of the shadow. Okay, so I picked this one. This is like a teal green color, and uh, it kind of goes with these beads. And then I have this lovely cord from, it says Leather Cord USA, but actually I got this from um, I'm guessing where I get it from, they get it from Leather Cord USA. So you can either go to Leather Cord USA, but I got this from Wholesale Jewelry Supply Company in Rhode Island. So you just, you know, type it in your search engine and it'll come up. Um, they are a wholesaler, so you do have to have a minimum order of $100, which is pretty easy. I think these are, um, this is 50 meters for like $25 American. Um, and I'm not sure about the shipping. I, th I think I pay shipping. I'm not sure if it's free shipping in the U.S. after 100. They also have a discount and stuff like that. So it's still they, their leather is just delicious. There's another place I get it from too. It's Exotica Leather, and it's spelled X S O T I C A. Um, so take a look at them. They have incredible colors and they have deals with shipping and wholesaling and stuff like that. So, and both of them, the leather's awesome. So we'll put that aside. I have cut three feet of leather, um, and folded in half. It's probably, uh, plenty of leather. I probably don't need that much, but I like to have extra because I like to do little, um, barrel knot tassels at the end to kind of clean it up and we are going to use this beautiful tear cast um, silver plated uh, tree of life button and these are so beautiful and i got this at art beads long long ago when they had a sale probably in the summer I have my uh, crimp tube, which is really just a uh, tube bead, and it f easily fits. This is two millimeter um, leather, and it easily fits through there. So, it's, and I don't know if I told you this is this color is called Splash. So, Splash Sea Foam Tree of Life, <laughs> and this lovely Eslon. So let's get started. Stuff aside here. So I'm gonna find the midpoint to my Eslon. Now the Eslon, we're gonna macrame this, and then we're gonna, as we're macrameing, we're gonna weave these on to the leather. So we find the midpoint of your Eslon as well as your leather. So like that, and. Like that. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can just put your button on right away and then add your Eslon and tie a knot, but I like to put it, secure it into the button as well. So let's, let's put the leather in first here. Ooh, she's tight. Oh, it's, it's not too bad. And just if you have a tight button, just be careful not to scuff up your leather, especially this type of leather. It's not a natural finish. This is like a, a coating, so it will um, 
it will uh, scuff up so you just have to be careful so let's see if we can get this on without a needle that could be oh I think I can do it I know we can and you're probably hearing some beeping we just had a big snowstorm so and this was shot this video was shot ahead of my surgery and uh, so we are February 8th today so Nova Scotia got a big snowstorm I may have to get a needle here one more try I was so close before. Let me grab a needle. Um, I had a a big eye needle. Let me see. I'm gonna try a trick here. Just take a piece of wire. Just a piece of wire and create your own needle. So let's do this like that and then pinch that together this wire is <laughs> soft flex so of course it's not bending the way I want it to and then just slide this through oh it's a little tighter than I thought I may have to do it the other way around and put the thread through there okay let's slide this in here and where's my Now let's find the midpoint here, bring it down. Oh. Oh, that's it. Get the needle jammed up here. midpoint for that and let's double check this one okay so we are set to go here let me move some of this stuff aside I'm gonna need this okay so just now we've got it on midpoint, and this is going to be your <laughs> tube bead tutorial. So these guys can go in the middle. This is not. Uh... Actually, let's flip it so that they are in the middle. Like that. Okay, and we're going to hang on. So pinch everything together. Like that. Hold it with your thumb. Take your um, barrel tube or your tube bead. Okay, then grab your one of your cords and you're going to wrap it around. One, two, and use your other finger to kind of hold it so that it doesn't come loose like that. Start again. So that's not confusing for you. So 
So you can put your tube, it doesn't really matter your position in your tube bead. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it once. And you're gonna go towards the button like that. And three. And then like this. Now I like to, yeah, like that. And then bring it up. So I switched fingers and push it through like that and pull it all the way through and keep hanging on to your knot and pull it through like that. Now I want my knot to be up far so I'm just going to kind of jiggle it and then pull. So one of them pulls the knot tight and the other one loosens the button. You can see the button moving. So make sure you have the correct one. Like that. And there you go. I like mine a little lower so that the button sits flat when I'm wearing it and then the loops around here. But some people will cinch it right up to the and Make sure it's tight and it's not going anywhere. And we are set to go. Oh, I guess I need um, a clipboard to put this on. I'm wondering if I show you how to do it on a um, on a bead board. Let me just align these guys here. No, I think we'll do it on the clipboard. It, I think the bead board is too big, so then you won't be able to see what I'm doing. later. So I have my clipboard. I'm going to take and clip my button. Now you might want to take a piece of fabric to uh, secure it so you don't scratch up your button. And I apologize I'm Kind of doing these on the fly, so I'm not as prepared as I probably should be. So I just grabbed a piece of fabric like this, and push it in like that. There. Then you can take the bottom piece of your leather and secure it to the bottom of the clipboard with a clip and same idea you want to you know uh, use your um, fabric so that you don't um, scuff up your leather I'll show you what it looks like so I've just rolled it and clipped it Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll do maybe 10 macrame pieces and then we'll start this guy. Let's do a few first and see, because we may end up not needing that many. I am going to enlarge just so you can see. I'll give you an idea of the macrame um, weave and then... If you're interested, I have some older videos that show you in, in great detail how to do this macrame, and there's tons of videos. So you just start out, I think some people call this a four. So you just do the one side like that, then take the other side, 
and it goes over top like this but then you're going to slide it under your leather and you're going to bring it through this loop here and that's not a really good <laughs> visual <laughs> of how to do a macrame sorry about that so like that and then bring it up to the top now we're going to go to the other side. I'm just wondering if I can turn this that way. I'm going to use the other side and we're going to do a, instead of a, a four, it's now a P. A patch. And do the same thing. You go over that side, under your leather, and then bring it through this loop of your P. And if you already know how to do that, just move on. Don't feel like you have to watch on my account. Some people out there don't have any idea how to do this, so I am uh, showing them for that. So I'll do a few more slowly so you can see. So, And that's probably too big. You can't see the whole thing. So here's your four. Like that. Then bring this one over top, under your leather, and slide it through that loop, and then cinch it up there. Now do the opposite side. There's your P. Bring this one over, under your leather, and through this loop, and pull it tight, and cinch it up. Then you're gonna pull the other one a little tighter well, I'll just keep going yeah I think I will um, I've got four now And you do this enough times, you start getting really fast. Eight. Nine and ten. So now we are going to start putting these drop beads on and hopefully we won't have too much trouble stringing them. The holes are teeny tiny. We may have to add a needle to these guys. Let me see if I cut it on an angle. I hold them in my hand. So bring those all the way down. Now we're going to do our macrame. So we have our beads there. Now we're going to go on the other side. Secure that. And just make sure it's tight. There. And let's do the 
next two. One. They're even small to hang on to. So if you have like a big eye needle, you could use that to thread them. And do one on the other side, and that will cinch those guys up. There. I'm so used to poking my beads with my thread. There we go. This Eslon's really good. It actually has some structure to it. This one's a little softer and silkier. But that other piece was kind of rigid, so let's see if we can poke this one. Yeah, wasn't too bad. Oh, I love this stuff. Here we go. So what can we talk about today? <laughs> you know, it's interesting with doing these videos um, ahead of time. I hadn't really thought about this when I was planning it, but I thought, you know, this would be good for me because if I ask you to tell me a story about something that I've just told a story about kind of thing, what's your experience with this? And then, so then when I have my surgery and I'm rehabbing, I'll be able to respond to your comments and I'll have something to do and something exciting. And so I really appreciate everybody's participation in this. So keep me going. This is turning out pretty nice. So I'm trying to think of what we can uh, talk about. Well, I guess I'll just start out by talking about beading. So I am so excited. I have done a few things now that I never thought I'd be able to do. So one of the things is doing peyote stitch. And uh, I think I'm ready. I, I think along these lines that peyote, the next jumping off, is maybe... Um, like a, a rope uh, stitch or a spiral stitch and I just saw a video and I've probably seen it before but just dismissed it because I thought oh I'll never be able to do that and it was using super duos to create a rope stitch and this one is just no, let me try another one well, that hole I can see is really small. I may have to get a needle on these guys. Yeah. Let me get my needle. So, there's my <laughs> lovely big eye needles. I used to use these all the time when I did... Uh, leather wrap bracelet workshops so let's 
see if we can find some decent ones. I should be able to thread that one and that one. I kind of didn't want to put any um, needle on this because when you're crisscrossing it, it's a uh, Um, you know, you got the needle, but I mean, it's not sharp, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so there's one. And let's try to straighten that out a bit. And then this one. So this one, you can see the thread, how it's sticking up. It's rigid, like there's some sizing on it. But we'll thread it anyway. I should have done that at the beginning. Okay, so that one's done. Let's get rid of these guys for now. Much better. Oh, I like to do... Oh, look. It doesn't want to go through the whole... The two strands. Oh, that's not going to work. That is a small... Okay. So, I guess there was a reason... Oh, I lost it. I could probably put some of that uh, special um, rubber cement to stiffen it. I'm just checking to see. Look, it seems like there's a big space between these two. Okay. So you could add um, a uh, another bead up here. Oh, look, a knot. That's not nice. Let's see if I can get that out. This is going to be boring for you guys watching me struggle. This is only my second time doing a bracelet like this. Surprise! Hence, this is not a tutorial. I think um, as I'm doing this, it's getting twisted. That one. Put those in. So 
been thinking about my mother lately, just uh, some of the stuff I should tell you. <laughs> I was telling my wife this the other day, and I can't remember why it came up in conversation. I know we were leaving the gym, and there's two high schools next to the gym. Well, actually, it's a high school and a grade school, and the traffic was crazy. We couldn't get through. And I was saying to her, I said, you know, I don't understand. Like, it was all parents picking up their kids from school, right? <laughs> and I said to Jen, I said, you know, I, I remember the time, I remember how many times my mom or dad picked us up from school, especially high school. I said it was exactly zero. We were old enough to get ourselves to and from school. This idea of picking up kids. But of course I lived in Toronto. And uh, we had public transit. So, you know, there's, again, like why would, my dad had a vehicle for work. My mom didn't drive. So... There's just no way we we took the streetcar home, but so I started talking about when we were in grade school. So we did grade uh, it was junior kindergarten, kindergarten, and then grades one through eight in one school, and it was the French school. So, um, and I went to school with my sister Sylvia. She was a grade below me. And, uh, so we, my mom would wake us up in the morning sometimes and she'd say, do you guys feel like going to school today? <laughs> Me and my sister would look at each other like, hmm? And like, uh, is this really happening? And we'd go, no, like this. And she'd say, do you want to go shopping and go out for lunch? <laughs> We're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. What it was, is my mom had nine kids. So, Sully and I were the youngest of the nine kids. So, by the time we were in grade school, and this was like we were uh, grade five and six kind of thing. And we were both really smart and did well in school. So, there was she wasn't worried about us missing school. But the thing was, she was lonely, which I think is so, so sad. She had like empty nest syndrome before we even left the house. But uh, so, yeah, we would go shopping with her and she'd take us out to lunch and we'd get some new clothes and stuff like that. And of course, we lived in Toronto, so there was lots of really cool places to go shopping for really cheap. There was a place called Honest Ed's. They actually just closed it this year. It was in the news. We gave away free turkeys at Thanksgiving and Christmas, I think. But it was... I'm trying to think what it would be comparable. It would be like a dollar store only. Uh, you know, the stuff was more than just a dollar, but it was like crazy deals. So a lot of people shop there and they had everything. They had furniture, they had clothing, they had groceries. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But I remember too, um, the teacher would get upset with us for missing school. And then when my mom would go to parent teacher night, the teacher would try to, um, you know, give her a hard time about it. And she's like, well, are they doing well in their classes? She's like, yeah, but that's not the point. <laughs> like, well, if they're doing fine, they're okay, right? And then sometimes she would come and pick us up for lunch and uh, take us out to lunch. And if we were like 15 minutes late, the teacher would freak out. And I'm like... You saw my mother pick me up. Like, I was with my mother. It wasn't like I was off 
you know, craziness. Yeah, so. And sometimes she would uh, take us to um, go for like a day of like a bike ride and a picnic. So we would take our bikes to um, Center Island. We have some islands in Toronto and uh, you could get ferries across. And during the week, I think you could take your bike on the ferry on either ferry. So like, I think there was like three or four islands and each one had their own separate ferry that would go across. And uh, during, during the day, during the week, because it wasn't busy, it wasn't commuting time, because people lived on these islands, um, you could get your bike. But on the weekends, you could only go to one of the uh, side islands, the smaller islands. And then they were all connected by a path. So you could ride your bike from one island to the next, which was really cool. So yeah, we would, my mom would ride her bike and we'd ride our bikes and head over there, have lunch, <laughs> skipping school. Uh, thanks, Bob. So the other thing about my mother is she was, um, she would get grossed out easily, which was funny because when us kids got hurt and there was like, if we had stitches and it had to be cleaned and stuff, she had a hard time doing that. So, um, which is funny because me being a nurse, <laughs> I definitely didn't have that issue. But um, one time we were at McDonald's and um, I got a sundae and they put peanuts on the sundae and it, they were salted peanuts and it was so gross. So what I did was I took my spoon and I was scooping the peanuts off and of course some of the ice cream came with it. So I was flinging it on a napkin and I knew my mom would be grossed out by it, so I covered the napkin so she couldn't see it. Before I had a chance, she went and she grabbed the napkin to use it to wipe her mouth. <laughs> and she ended up with ice cream and peanuts all over her mouth. And then she started gagging. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying not to laugh. I was a teenager at the time. I'm trying not to laugh. And it's like, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> my poor mom retching in the McDonald's. It's not the thing you want to hear. <laughs> and then the time she took us out, we used to, oh my, we used to tease her so bad. And she never gave us a hard time about it. So, like, we would embarrass her more than anything. So we'd be waiting for the streetcar to come or something. And we'd be goofing around and dancing on the street and stuff like that. But, uh, so one time we, um... When Kiwis first came out, I don't know if they were out in other parts of the world, but when we first got them in Canada, it was a big deal. So my mom bought some. We'd gone to like the farmer's market and she bought some. And uh, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to wait till we get home. I'm going to try one now. And um, she started eating it like an apple. She takes a big bite. She's like, I don't know about this furry stuff on the outside. <laughs> I'm like, I think you're supposed to peel it. It was funny. And she taught me how to play cards. Oh my gosh, we used to play cards all the time. When I was uh, out of high school, I was living with my parents and uh, I was working at a place called Brewers Retail and uh, I had to get up. I think my shift started at five and uh, so I would go to bed at like nine at night. Well, my mom and dad would have the neighbors over to play cards and uh, they'd start like talking really loud and laughing and stuff and I was so bad my wife says this to me all the time. She goes, oh, you got to see whatever's going on. You think you're going to miss something. I'm like, yep. 
Uh huh. So uh, that must be a small hole. Let's try another one. Yeah, it was a small hole. Put that one aside. So um, I would get up and then end up playing cards with them. And then I'd be sorry the next morning. We had so much fun. And then, like, it was, like, 11 o'clock at night, and my mom would say, like, she would serve a kind of snack meal, which was, like, a full-on meal at 11 o'clock at night. Or she'd say, oh, who wants Chinese food? <laughs> like, uh, I do. So then she'd order Chinese food. And again, being in Toronto, the prices were so cheap and delivery was free. So, yeah, we had a good time. My, uh, part of the reason they could do that too is my dad had an accident. He worked on construction and he had an accident, fell off a scaffold. So he ended up on disability from that and uh, so he didn't have to worry about getting up early in the morning because he used to get up at like four to go to work so so I will um, measure this and see where we're at here but it goes by quick when I start yammering <laughs> I remember, like, when my mom was teaching me to play euchre, how she would get mad at me. So she'd sit behind me and she'd say, okay, this is what you need to play and this is this kind of thing, right? And I think we used to play partners euchre. And uh, I remember she's like, oh, why did you play that? You're so stupid. I'm like, I'm not playing with you anymore. They would take it so seriously, and you know what? I come by that competitiveness, honestly, because oh, I am terrible. I don't play games anymore because I'm too competitive. I know that about myself, so I just don't do it. Like, I just lose it. And it's not if I don't win. It's just a winning at all costs kind of thing. Because <laughs> I always win. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Put that guy back where he belongs. Did that guy get spun around here? And the, the one time that they came to visit me in North Carolina the person I was with, his parents came to visit as well. And uh, so my parents were playing cards with them. And my mom and dad started yelling at each other, saying, oh, you stupid idiot, why'd you play that card? Didn't you know I had this and stuff like that? And they're yelling and they're like slamming their cards on the table and stuff. And... This guy's parents were like, oh my gosh, are they fighting? And I'm like howling, laughing, going, no, that's, that's how they play cards. And then they're like laughing and joking and hugging and kissing each other right after that. So it was clear they weren't fighting. The, in, in one sense, the playing like that, where it's like you just let loose kind of kept them from fighting in other areas because you get your stress out that way okay I'm going to do this one and then take a look I'm guessing probably about half more of this there Get my ruler out. So I'm going to add about a half an inch for the button. So that's four. 
and let's go to seven. So actually, I think we're going to need a whole other one of these. So, so I'm going to go ahead and finish it. So this will be a two-parter. This way, we're already at 45 minutes, and I apologize for the beginning being a bit wonky. So I will finish this up, and we'll come and do the barrel knots, and that'll be in the second part of this video. Okay, take care.